This video explains the methods for transferring data in holiday lighting controllers over different types of infrastructure or physical media or wireless. So let's start off with some basic understandings. So it's helpful to probably compare this to something that everybody is normally familiar with, S communicating as a human. So when we communicate, we can use our voice or we can use written. Now, when you use voice or written, those can be used with many different languages. Obviously, many people speak different languages and they write in many different languages. So, if we wanted a comparison here, we could use wired and wireless. Or you could also refer to that as Wi Fi. So, these have the same kind of connection. This means that a wired network can send data in different formats, just like written language by humans can send data in different formats. We call course languages. So, let's move up one additional level here. So, the next level is we need to define equivalents. So, we might have English and Spanish here, and the equivalency might be Ethernet or um, RS-485, which you may have heard of. Now, these are just different signaling methods, and a signaling method is just a method for the data to be exchanged between two electronic devices. No different than your voice when two people agree to speak one language is transferring back and forth in a way that they both understand. So, we can of course use different kinds of voice communication with different languages, but if they're not compatible with the sender and receiver, they cannot be understood. So, let's use one of the most common methods. So, here we have two different kinds of controllers. Here we have an AlphaPix. This is an AlphaPix Evolution, and it uses Cat5 cable. So, Cat5 cable is the cable you've seen probably for many years. It has eight pins on it, and it has wires that go between them. You might also see it referred to as Cat6 as a newer generation. Now, that cable could be the equivalent of, if we go back here, let's say voice or written. In this case, we used written for wired. So, we have to agree that when we plug something in here to this controller, that it can talk on the other end of this wire in the same language. Now, that language is Ethernet. Ethernet is what is sent across the wire. Ethernet is not the cable. This is Cat5 cable. Some people do refer to it as Ethernet cable, but that's not technically correct. It's Cat5 cable that can send Ethernet. So what we have is a layer here. We have at the bottom the Cat5 cable, which transmits data between the two devices, for example, your computer and the controller, in Ethernet, and then we have something above that, which you may have heard of as TCP IP or IP or Internet Protocol. And then further, we have additional protocols. Now, this video is not going to delve into those higher levels. We have a video for each of those levels. So this video is simply covering the physical connections between the controllers. So, this Cat5 cable is ubiquitous in controllers. Why? It's because Cat5 cable is ubiquitous and super cheap. It's available in every size, color, length, method of construction, quality. Everything you can imagine is possibly configured in Cat5 cable. So a lot of vendors have built products around Cat5 cable. Now, just because they use Cat5 cable does not mean that they can be used together to communicate. So, let's give you an example. This controller is an Ethernet-based controller. Ethernet would normally hook up to your computer, or this would be hooked up to your network or network switch, and that means that it's a high-level, high-bandwidth device. Now, here we have a dumb controller 
This is fairly low bandwidth. This is a total of 30 channels, as where the controller I just showed you is as many as 15,000 channels. So in this particular device, we need lower bandwidth. We don't need as much data because we're only transferring 30 channels of data. Now, typically with DMX or DMX 1990, technically called DMX E1.11, not to be confused with E131, E111, or DMX 1990 is this plug right here. This is the normal plug that was originally part of the specification. It is called a XLR or DMX jack. Now, normally it is actually five pins, but over time the electronics industry and the musicians that typically would have used DMX controlling devices, which you see in concerts and stage productions, would have used microphone cable, which happens to be very similar to DMX cable, but three pins as opposed to five, since Two of the other pins were generally not used. So we just need a uh, two pins and a ground. And technically we only need two pins. So later on, as the adoption of ethernet became more common and Cat5 cable got cheaper, they said, oh, let's expand our standard for E111 and add a standard for Cat5. Because why? It's super cheap and it's available everywhere. Great, guess what? This plug right here, Right here, XLR, three pin, same as here. Same data, just different plugs that they're going out of. Now, does that mean that you can hook these two devices together? No, this is not possible. And in certain cases, depending upon the devices, can damage those. So, let's pull this out so you can see this a little bit better. So we cannot plug from our ethernet cable I mean, our ethernet plug on this AlphaPix Evolution controller over to this device because this uses, let me see if I can get this off here, RS-45. RS-45 is a protocol from the 1970s and it is very low bandwidth. It is 99 times slower than the bandwidth on this ethernet port, which is 100 megabits a second. This is under 100 megabits, it's one megabit, and sometimes it's even half of that, or half a megabit. So dial-up era speeds compared to modern day internet speeds. Why again, didn't need it. Older technology, designed in the 1990s, and we just didn't need that much bandwidth. So this method of using RS-45 was great. All right, so, Another common one is Lidorama controllers. So if you have a legacy LOR controller, like an AC controller, anything that uses the LOR protocol. Now it will also have Cat5 jacks, just like this. That uses the RS-45 protocol. But its higher level protocol differs. So let's show you some examples of that. And again, this video is not intended to cover all the different protocols. So at this lower level, we can have CAT5. And then across that could be uh, RS-45 or Ethernet. And then across this, we could have the LOR protocol or DMX. So you can see DMX and LOR both run on RS-45, which runs on Cat5 cable. But these cannot talk the same language. Even though they're speaking, let's say, verbally to one another, they could signal the same. They talk totally different languages. So it would be like having somebody who's English and Spanish trying to talk to one another. Even though they're both speaking, to each other, they could not understand each other because the protocols at the higher level are different. Now, we will have another video that explains these protocols. All right, now, a few other confusions on CAT5 is differential long range controllers. Now, we do have very specific videos on long range controller devices and how they operate, but let's just show you what those look like. So, in this controller here, we have a long range output. You can see those right here, four plugs. Now, you may notice also that uh, these plugs have slight differences. So let's see if we can just uh, zoom this in here. And so you'll see that there's some slight difference. Let me get these so that they're going the same direction so it made it a little clearer. You'll notice that there are lights on these corners. 
This is a Hinx Pix Pro, a very, very advanced adapter or CPU, and it has Ethernet, and it has two of them because it has a network switch so you can come in and then go out and branch. But it has status indicators, and that is because this indicates whether it's linked up or not. Now, this kind of connection right here is differential, and the devices on those do not have status indicators. Now, they use regular good old fashioned Cat5 cable. Again, why? Because it's cheap and it's ubiquitous. So, what's happening here is we have data coming into the controller, it's coming in from the PC, and it is going through the processor, it has then been reprocessed, and then sent out here. Now, to make this just slightly more confusing, this is RS-45. RS-45 is a differential protocol. Differential just means that it's uh, very immune to outside interference. Hence why it was used in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, especially for um, industrial applications where you have very noisy environments. So, these devices actually use RS-45 with their own protocol. So we can add one more over here. We can add differential. Now, does this mean that you can plug this differential receiver, it has pixel outputs, into your computer? No. They are totally different. Cat5? Absolutely. Cat5 cable will plug in there just fine. But that is RS-45 on a special protocol that's not LOR, it's not DMX, it's differential. And so it's unique to this particular design. It's also not Ethernet and thus it won't hook up to your computer. So, hopefully this has helped explain some of the differences here. Uh, now, oh, before I go, we should explain one last thing. Wireless. Now, why have all these wires when the world's got wireless everything? And we do have controllers with wireless. In this Hinks Pix Pro, we have a wireless con uh, controller right here. You can see it, its antenna is right here. And you'll notice that it has Ethernet, two of them, again, a network switch, and wireless. Now, there's some important considerations, and we have additional documentation with lots of technical detail on our website. But, suffice to say that we are sending lots of data over our connections. Now, as we mentioned, Cat5 cable can be uh, used in very low speed, RS-45 type connections, and it can be also reused in very high speed, up to a thousand megabits or more per second. So sometimes as much as a hundred or even almost a thousand times faster uh, with Ethernet. Now, this is all good because it's super cheap, it's absolutely accurate, it always gets the data there, there's no interference from a neighbor's Wi-Fi access point or anything like that. So wired connections and holiday lighting are the gold standard. You should always strive to use wire where possible. Now, there are some certain circumstances and situations where wireless does make sense. Now, first we need to understand that wireless um, is not good with uh, connections that are asynchronous. So, what does that mean? Well, whenever you're downloading a YouTube video, you may notice that it buffers and it has a little line that goes ahead and indicates that it's already downloaded data. That means that if your Wi-Fi connection drops out for half a second or a second or two, you'll never even notice because it has already downloaded all the data. And the vast majority of websites do this. So if you're scrolling through your feed and Facebook, they've already downloaded the feed that you're not even looking at yet. It's already on your device. And as you scroll up, they start to appear. So those videos just pop into place. Now, most protocols related to lighting are very synchronous. In other words, it's a like electricity where it's produced and consumed at the exact same time. So, when it's sent from the device, whatever it is, let's say it's from your computer or from a player, and it's sent to the controller, it has to go immediately. And because we're talking thousands of a second here, even just a second delay will cause a glitch in your display and the output. And wireless has to contend with a lot of problems because there is no control over the wireless network 
airspace. Now, sure, there's some things where we can do directed content going directly to specific receivers that's very directional, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking good old fashioned, regular, omnidirectional wireless, like we almost all use. And in that case, that means that if somebody is downloading something on the network or somebody else's device overpowers this device and it has to switch channels or some other issue causes that data to slow down, that means that you'll have problems with wireless. So, in most cases, wireless is used for one of two reasons. Either one, in the case of this Hinkspix Pro, we have the ability to have the sequences loaded onto the controller, and they're actually playing from an SD card, so we're not transferring any real large amounts of data, and this wireless is just used between two controllers to keep them in sync. Sort of like a, we're at minute, we're at two minutes, we're at three minutes in the song, so they all stay in sync with the same sequence. And we're transferring very small amounts of data there. Now, the other option is you just need to be able to access this. So maybe you've uploaded your sequences to this device or they have downloaded from the website where you have uh, purchased a sequence and they download to the device and then they're stored onto the SD card and then when you play your sequence, they just play from the SD card. So it's only used to download temporarily the data to the SD card where it's played, which is high speed. And then the third option in this controller would be that you want to access it remotely. So maybe you want to use your phone to tweak a setting, turn on a, on a test mode or something like that. Now, can you stream data to this directly from, let's say, your PC or another device outside this controller over wireless? You can, but be aware in most controllers, some almost none at all can be sent and in some you have limits so there is a limit on wireless and we do not recommend it generally speaking unless you're very experienced with uh, your project and wireless technologies uh, not to use wireless just use the good old-fashioned super super cheap cat5 cable and again be aware cat5 cable just because it plugs into something doesn't mean necessarily that it's uh, connected there. Now, one other little note here. Um, you may see what are called RS-45 connections on controllers. So you have modern controllers that have RS-45 connections. Now, I'll give you an example. So we have two here. So we have a Hinkspix Pro and it has a output here. This is a, a Phoenix style connection. So you take your wires, you screw them on there and that could be any kind of wire. It could be Cat5, it could be X, uh, uh, DMX cable or something like that. What happens is, is we're sending data to the controller over ethernet and then one of the interfaces outputs data to this older technology. So what we're doing is we're actually taking data over Cat5 from our computer via ethernet via DMX, which is not shown here, uh, E131, for example, and we're converting it into a format of RS-45 and DMX. And so that actually can output this. Now this controller here uh, also has jacks, which output uh, LOR data in that LOR format and wiring strategy, also DMX and something else called Renard. Uh, so, there are different kinds of jacks on here. So even though these jacks all look like they can take Cat5, we can't just plug things in willy-nilly. So be aware of that when you're using them. Now, you'll notice that many controllers now are starting to deprecate this RS-45 because RS-45 